Right, good evening, everyone. I'd like to call this village board meeting to order on Monday, February 17, 2020. We're very pleased to be joined tonight to help lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance and flag ceremony, Cub Scout Pack 130 from St. Simon's Episcopal Church and Westgate Elementary School. And to introduce the scouts who are with us tonight are their leaders, Mickey Snyder and Evan Bunting. Hi, can you hear me? There you go. Uh, tonight we have Arrow of Light Scout Russell Snyder. We have Bear Scout John Seagram, Bear Scout Zach Lipton, Wolf Scout Ethan Eichstadt, and Tiger Scouts Shahir Samra and Dylan Bunting. Right, thank you. Please take it away. Okay. Color guard attention. Audience, please rise. Scout salute those not in uniform. Please place your right hand over your heart. Color guard forward march. Color guard halt. Color guard cross the colors. Color Guard posts the flag of the United States. Color Guard posts the flag of the village of Arlington Heights. <coughs> Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Color Guard, return to rank. Color guard about face. <coughs> Color guard forward march. Color guard halt. At ease, audience, please be seated. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> nice job, gentlemen. Thank you for joining us tonight. <laughs> Would the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Padovani? Here. Trustee Lebeds? Here. Trustee Tanalia? Here. Trustee Baldino? Here. Trustee Schwingbeck? Here. Trustee Scaletta? Here. Trustee Canty? Here. Trustee Rosenberg? Here. President Hayes? Here. First item on the agenda is the approval of minutes, and we've got a number of sets to approve tonight. The first is from the Joint Library and Village Board meeting of January 11, 2020. Any changes or passes? Yes. yes. Passed by Trustees Rosenberg and Tanalia. Can I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Second. By Trustee Padovani. Seconded by Trustee Baldino. I think. No. No. Okay. <laughs> Trustee Schwingbeck. Make it <laughs> Trustee Schwingbeck. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Next, we've got the Committee of the Whole Meeting minutes from January 13, 2020. Any changes or passes? Move approval. Second. Motion to approve by Trustee Scaletta. Seconded by Trustee Lebeds. Any Questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And finally, the minutes from the village board meeting from January 21, 2020. Any changes or passes? Pass. Passed by Trustee Rosenberg. Move approval. Motion to approve by Trustee Lebed, second by Trustee Baldino. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Next, we move on to the approval of the accounts payable, and I call on Trustee Rosenberg. Thank you, Mayor Hayes. I'd move approval of the warrant register with a check date of 1-30-2020 in the amount of $1,577,773.51. Second. Motion by Trustee Rosenberg, second by Trustee Scaletta. Any questions or comments from the board? Anything from the audience? Roll call. Trustee Rosenberg? Yes. Trustee Scaletta? Yes. Trustee Lebeds? Yes. Trustee Schwingbeck? Yes. Trustee Baldino? Yes. Trustee Tanalia? Yes. Trustee Canty? Yes. Trustee Pedavani? Yes. President Hayes? Yes. And Trustee Rosenberg? Thank you, Mayor. I move approval of the warrant register with a check date of uh, February 15, 2020, in the amount of $2,574,823.22. Second. Motion by Trustee Rosenberg, say by Trustee Scaletta. Any questions or comments from the board or from the audience? Seeing none, uh, roll call. Trustee Rosenberg? Yes. Trustee Scaletta? 
Yes. Trustee Tenalia? <clears throat> yes. Trustee Padovani? Yes. Trustee Canty? Yes. Trustee Labeds? Yes. Trustee Baldino? Yes. Trustee Schwingbeck? Yes. President Hayes? Yes. We move on in the agenda to recognitions and presentations, and we do have two proclamations tonight. Uh, is anyone here representing the League of Women Voters? I don't see Heidi Graham tonight. There's uh, Heidi mentioned that she thought that today was a holiday, or today is a holiday, and that uh, she thought the meeting was tomorrow. Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and um, read the proclamation. The uh, League of <laughs> Women Voters just celebrated their 100th anniversary uh, this past Friday, February 14th, Valentine's Day. And so we uh, just wanted to recognize the great work that they do on behalf of Arlington Heights voters uh, in recruiting and educating and uh, informing. And so we recognize our local chapter, uh, which includes Arlington Heights, Mount Prospect, Buffalo Grove, formally, and I understand unofficially, goes on to add Prospect Heights, Elk Grove, Village, and Wheeling. And so it covers a very large area. So we, again, thank all the members of the League of Women Voters for all the work that they do and for their 100th anniversary of um, providing that work. And so let me just read this proclamation, officially recognizing the 100th anniversary of the League of Women Voters, whereas on February 14, 2019 20, the League of Women Voters, or the League, was formed at the Congress Hotel in Chicago, Illinois. Whereas the League was formed six months prior to, by the ante anticipation of, ratification of the 19th Amendment, giving women the right to vote in the United States. Whereas the League was a political experiment designed to help 20 million women carry out their new responsibilities as voters by educating them about issues. Whereas from the beginning, the League determined that it would be nonpartisan, neither supporting nor opposing any political party or individual candidate. Whereas the League continues today as a nonpartisan political organization that encourages informed and active participation in government, works to increase understanding of major public policy issues, and influences public policy through education and advocacy. And whereas the League is composed of members in over 700 local, county, and state leagues in all 50 states, plus the District of Columbia, the Virgin Islands, and Hong Kong. Whereas among those states' uh, leagues is the League of Women Voters of Illinois that was incorporated on March 22, 1920, and in turn is composed of over 40 local leagues with almost 4,000 members. Whereas members of the League first study and then take action on a broad range of issues after reaching consensus on positions. Whereas leagues at all levels, among other activities, register voters, educate voters by holding candidate forums and publishing voter guides, publish public policy research, and hold meetings on key issues. Whereas the League is a civic organization that has fought since 1920 to improve government and engage everyone in the decisions that impact their lives. And whereas the League celebrated, again, its 100th anniversary on February 14, 2020, now, therefore, I, Thomas W. Hayes, Mayor of the Village of Arlington Heights, along with the Board of Trustees, do hereby declare February 14, 2020, as a date to celebrate the League of Women Voters and its vision of a democracy where every person has the desire, the right, the knowledge, and the confidence to participate. So uh, congratulations again to the League of Women Voters for 100 years of great work. And so can we just give them a round of applause? Uh, comments from the board on that? Trustee Scaletta. <clears throat> so uh, Ms. Graham, again, could not be here. Um, she is down with the flu, but uh, again, thought it was um, tomorrow evening, um, which a lot of times I've thought that uh, President's Day, our meeting is the following day, but um, we don't recognize, we recognize President's Day, but we don't close down the village. Um, but the, the, the League of Women Voters um, does an incredible job of making sure that <clears throat> every election, whether it's contested or not, um, that they get the word out that there is an uh, upcoming election and um, they make sure that there's candidates forums uh, for this very board um, and for the other um, boards like the park district and the school districts and even the library district 
um, that they have an opportunity for the residents to come and ask questions, and also the meeting is televised, so uh, I commend them on the work that they do um, representing all the residents in the village of Arlington Heights to make sure that the word gets out that, that there's an election and that people have the opportunity to ask questions of the candidates. Hey, Trustee Labeds. And I would just like to add that there are two of us on this board who are members of the League of Women Voters, myself and Trustee Canty, and uh, others in the audience who I know are members of the League of Women Voters. And it is, well, uh, it is open to uh, women and men, uh, and uh, we invite anyone who's interested in good government and voter service to be a part of it. It's a great organization. And thank you, Mayor Hayes, for the proclamation. Trustee Canty. I just wanted to echo my colleagues' comments. The League does a tremendous amount of work, not just around elections, but around all things government. And so they do a lot of work registering voters, making sure that students know about their rights to vote as they approach their 18th birthday. Um, so they do a lot of good work in the community from all ages. So I'm very proud to be a member, and I know other people on this board feel the same way. Okay. Thank you. Well, uh, to Heidi at home uh, in her sick bed, hopefully she is watching from home and not watching The Bachelor tonight. <laughs> so uh, she can switch the channel after um, in just a moment. But again, Heidi, thank you for all of your, your great work leading uh, the League of Women Voters uh, in this local area. Well, uh, we have another proclamation to give tonight and it's uh, altogether fitting and appropriate that we follow the League of Women Voters proclamation with a proclamation recognizing African American History Month in the village of Arlington Heights. In that regard, African American history was first formally recognized in the United States by a designated week in 1926 coinciding with the birthdays of Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass. The event inspired schools and communities nationwide to organize local cel celebrations, establish history clubs, and host performances and lectures. By the late 1960s, thanks in part to the Civil Rights Movement, the week evolved into African American History Month on many college campuses. And in 1976, President Gerald Ford officially recognized African American History Month by calling upon the public to seize the opportunity to honor the too often neglected accomplishments of African Americans in every area of endeavor throughout our history. Since 1976, every American president has designated February as African American History Month and endorsed a specific theme. I say it's appropriate to read these two proclamations in tandem tonight because the theme for African American History Month this year is African Americans and the vote in honor of the centennial anniversary of the 19th Amendment granting women's suffrage in 1920 and the sesquicentennial of the 50th Amendment giving African-American men the right to vote in 1870. So I would like to read this proclamation recognizing National African-American History Month here in the village of Arlington Heights. Whereas during National American, African American History Month, we honor the extraordinary contributions made by African Americans throughout history of our republic, and we new, renew our commitment to liberty and justice for all. Whereas during African American History Month, we recognize the achievements of African Americans and their role in shaping history, along with the contributions that African Americans have made to enhance the economic, cultural, spiritual, and political development of our country. Whereas this year's theme, African Americans and the Vote, celebrates the 150th anniversary of the 15th Amendment, which gave African American men the right to vote. This amendment to the Constitution, ratified in 1870, prohibits the government from denying a citizen's right to vote based on race, color, or previous condition of servitude. The Voting Rights Act of 1965 enforces this act today and is a legacy to Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. and the Civil Rights Movement. Whereas this year also marks the 100th, 150th anniversary of the first African American to serve in Congress. Senator Hiram Revels was a Missi Mississippi Republican who served a one-year term 
in 1870. Whereas during National African American History Month, we recognize the essential role of African Americans in shaping the story of America and honor their courage and contributions. So therefore, I, Thomas W. Hayes, Mayor of the Village of Arlington Heights, along with the Arlington Heights Village Board of Trustees, do hereby proclaim February 2020 as National African American History Month in the Village of Arlington Heights and urge all of our citizens to observe this month with appropriate programs, ceremonies, and activities. So it shall be duly proclaimed. Comments from the board. All right. I just, Trust you can't, just really quick, I just wanted to thank you for that proclamation. I thought that was fantastic. And I noticed that the village staff had also been putting out some information on some local African American history here in town. And I just thought it was a really cool thing to learn about in this time. So thank you for that and thank the staff for that as well. Thank you, Trustee Campion. Anyone else? All right, seeing none, that is uh, all of our recognitions and presentations. So we will move on to citizens to be heard. And we do have one blue card from an individual in the audience who wishes to address the board on an item not on the agenda. And that's Michael Brooks. Michael, if you come forward and uh, just remind it of the three minute time limit, if you would. Mm -hmm. I'll try to be fast. Um, I want to address the board on uh, the 5G cell technology. Is everyone, everyone probably has a, a cell phone. 4G, that just means the generation of cell technology. So the phone's emitting radiation. Right now it's one to three gigahertz. So you assume, oh, 5G, that'll be the next one. That'll probably just be a little bit more. It's 300 gigahertz higher, okay? So wh what does that mean for us? Uh, I'm gonna give you an example. I'm glad the firemen are here. In California, they were early adopters of this, and they put uh, two of these devices on top of the fireman's house. And within a few weeks, all the firemen were complaining of lightheadedness, dizziness, they, they were feeling chest pains and weak, all sorts of problems. So they had an expert come in and they tested them. All the firemen had abnormal brain functions. And uh, the International Association of Firefighters, they actually got an exemption. We do not want these, these towers you know, these little devices on top of, uh, I don't know if that's just for California, hopefully it's here too. Um, so there are, there are towns and there are municipalities all over the country and over the world trying to stop the 5G because a lot of people, you guys look like you've never heard of this, they don't know about these dangers. Vermont's trying, the whole state of Vermont, uh, there's other towns, um, Portland, Oregon has a ban, I think Switzerland has a ban, the whole country, Brussels has, it, has a ban. Uh, there's another example in uh, San Joaquin County in California. On top of their school, they had a 5G device. And three of the students and four of the teachers all got different forms of cancer. And the parents said, we're not, we're not going to send our kids to school unless you remove this. In Sprint, they said, well, we, we have the right to do it. it was, we're not going to, you know, so they went back and forth. And Sprint relented. And they said, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll take it down. And, you know, that was that. Um, so what does this mean for us? Well, the way the cell phone towers work now, they're a few miles apart. But with the 5G, because they're so much more powerful, but they can't travel as far. So they want to put these small cells every one to three houses apart. They want to put it in front of schools. They want to put it in front of businesses. You know, we have new businesses here. So that means you're getting exposed to this radiation 24 hours a day when you sleep. It could be right in front of where your child sleeps, right in front of their homeroom. And they wouldn't even know because the cell companies, they, you know, they don't want people to know about it. Um, I talked to Dr. Martin Paul. He's professor of biochemistry at uh, Washington State. He has a team of scientists from all over the world. And they've written to the EU. They've gone to the UN, the World Health Organization, asking for a moratorium no 5G until further testing. And he gives great talks online explaining what it does to your cells. Just having the current technology now on your body, what it does, how it damages you. And he, and I'm gonna quote him now, he says any, any leadership that would allow this into their community, you're absolutely insane to do this. That's what the expert, that's what he says. So I see I'm out of time, but I wanted to bring that to the board because I know a lot of people don't know about the dangers of this, so 
you know, and I know they have it in Chicago, and I'm sure, you know, it might be coming to Arlington Heights. And I talk to uh, people at Sprint, people on the, and I know someone that works for AT&T, and he told me personally, he's like, we're not supposed to, we, we have to keep it hush hush. We just want to slip it into the towns before they know. So I want to bring this to the board so you guys are aware, and I'm glad there's a lot of, I, I wish the parents of the Boy Scouts were here. So everyone, if you have any questions, well, please I let appreciate me know. it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we are familiar with 5G okay. technology. We have so, had some experience with it. Mm -hmm. uh, just from what I know, I know the medical and scientific community differ in terms mm -hmm. of their their opinions on the dangers associated but, with it. I know you've cited the ones yeah. that cite uh, a danger associated with it. There are other studies that say just the opposite. Or so say there, it hasn't been proved. I know what you're saying. Can I address that? No, I know what you're saying. Okay. But uh, let me have Mr. Recklaus just address what we know about 5G. Okay. Well, well, what I was going to say is, um, you know, I can't comment on the, on, on kind of the medical impacts. But what I can say is that state and federal law specifically prohibits municipalities from regulating anything related to the health issues of 5G. Um, and so we do not have the authority to prohibit the installation of 5G in our community based on health issues. I mean, it's, right. it's, not, there's, it's not something that, that we can, we, we can't prohibit the installation at all. Um, but it isn't something, in terms of um, if residents are concerned about 5G, this just isn't the venue to bring it up because we, we're powerless on this. And, um, you know, this is, this is something that was preempted by other levels of government to prevent com each community independently having their own debate over whether or not 5G uh, <coughs> should or, or could come into their community. Uh, can I address that? Please, if you would just take another minute. Yeah, so uh, that, that's true. There's a law in the Telecommunications Act that says if you bring up health, uh, you know, sprint of these companies, oh, we can sue you. You can't, you can't stop. we got to put these in front of your schools, in front of your children's you know, bedroom. And if you try to say health, we can sue you. So that is true, which is, I don't know why that would be in a law where health is secondary to money, but it is. Uh, but certain communities have uh, I, Palm, uh, Palm Beach, uh, Florida. They said, oh, aesthetically, it would be a disaster. And so they did a little loophole. And they didn't resist for health. They said it was aesthetics. And they got it. They have an exemption. So there are ways to do it. Uh, you know, I mean, if they're going to try to force it on us, especially <coughs> without the knowledge. I mean, we all live here. I mean, I'm sure you don't want one of these things and just play Russian roulette right in front of your bedroom. So if you guys have the power to say, oh, well, aesthetically, it would wreck Arlington Heights. And you could use that as a way to resist it. Thank you for coming tonight. Um, it is something that we have learned about. And uh, we would never do anything that would harm any residents in Arlington Heights. And so uh, before we would implement anything that has the potential for harming anyone, we would certainly do whatever research is necessary. So, Do you mind if I comment on that? Well, no, let me, we got to move okay. on in our well, agenda, but if you could just have Mr. Reckless. Miss I mean, Ward, Ward had one more comment. If, if yeah, let me share. just clarify. The local government in, in the state of Illinois, mm -hmm. and I don't know the Florida law, so I can't talk about that. There is a state law, and the federal government has ruled on the health issues. So locally, we have no ability to address that in any in any way, shape, or form. There is a state law that also preempts the majority of our authority to stop these from going, from going in. What we did last year was we adopted an ordinance that sets forth the things that we can regulate, so the aesthetics to the extent that we can do that. So staff's been having a lot of meetings with these companies to try and work through those things. But there's very little that in this state we can do. Yeah, and I, I assume, based on what Mr. Brooks is saying, the, the reason the federal government allows it is that in, at least in their experts' right. opinion, Correct. they don't feel that there is a health Correct. risk. And so I understand there are studies that say there is a health risk. That's what I, my point. Well, there's no studies that aren't connected to the industry. The FCC, you know, everyone on the board, Ajit Pai, he's a former attorney for Verizon. All the people on there, there's not one scientist. And they're also studying thermal effects if it heats you up from the early 90s. So Brooks, they don't... We're going to have to move on in our agenda. But okay, I would, I, as Mr. Recklaus indicated, I think... It's really not us that you need to be talking to. It's the federal government well, who, who makes these laws. It's true, but I mean, I mean, we can't go to Washington and have a big battle, but we could at least protect 
our own streets, our own we're, children. As what are we going to say? We can't do yeah. that. So we're, we just got to let our children get cancer. We're, we're, we don't have the ability to stop the five G antennas from coming in. We don't have the ability. Right. It's been taken away from us. So we just have to allow it. That's correct. No, I, well, at least all no. the citizens of the community should know. The, on Oakton, I've seen one of these canisters. I, I don't know if you know what they look like. Uh, this family is being exposed to it. They don't even know. Mr. Brooks, you know, we have to rely on the federal government, who's, who is an official government agency that's telling us that they, their experts, the federal government experts, don't see any associated health risks. And you're going to just believe well, that? Well, I mean, I understand against, what you're saying. Yeah. I haven't seen I, any the of the expert. studies that you're you know, Well, I, you're I'd love saying. to share them with you. I'd love to share them with I'm you. I'm sure there are studies out there. No, no, I, I would, I, as competing. I said, there's no studies for the non-thermal effects. There are studies only thermal heating effects, like, oh, my head's hot. Oh, that's fine. You, you can pull that to your head all day. There's no studies for non-thermal effects. That's what the head of biochemistry, who, who heads this group that goes to the EU and the UN, He's saying, no, 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 you, they're not no, testing no, we, this. we got to move on our, on, in our agenda, but if you have studies that you want to share with the village manager. If you would like to see tonight, them, I mean, I feel like you don't want to. If you would like to see them, I'd love to show you well, them. Please, please uh, not tonight, but yeah. uh, in the next couple of days, please share them with the village manager. Yeah, I just hope you take it all to heart because um, I, I'm sure you, you, we all live here, so I'm sure you, no one in the room wants to get cancer, early Parkinson's or Alzheimer's. These are all the effects, so. That's what, one, that's what your studies say. No, that's what any, any scientist who isn't connected to the telecom industry says. Okay. Anyone. Thanks, Mr. Brex. All right. Just take, provide take your to studies heart. to the village manager, if okay. you would. All right. Are there any other individual? Trustee Scaletta, do you have a comment? Uh, all, all you wanted to do was encourage you to reach out to state and you know, reach out to your congresswoman, Schakowsky. Reach out to um, – I, I, I'm not asking you to come back. I'm just telling you to reach out to your state and federal legislators, and when you get their response, please forward it to us so that we can see what you're doing. But like the mayor said, our hands are tied. The community should at least know. I, I agree, and you're getting your, mess you're getting your message out. Reach out to the legislators that created the laws that have tied our hands. Okay. So Thank you. I appreciate you for coming. I, I, I really do. Okay. All right, are there any other individuals who wish to address the board on an item not on the agenda? Melissa, Melissa just Kerr. give us your full name. Melissa Care. How can we get non-property tax paying properties to pay their share of the services that get billed on the property tax bill? All right, Melissa, I think you've asked this question before and I think we've given you this answer, haven't we? Yes. I, w I must not have been clear about what the answer was. All right, why don't you, uh, Mr. Recklaus, if you want to address it again, you can, or you can have, uh, you, can, you can contact Mr. Recklaus tomorrow if you would. I know we've had, Melissa, I, I'm not trying to, uh, to cut you off, but I know you've asked this very same question in many, many other meetings. Are there any other uh, village, uh, any other audience members who wish to address the board on an item not on the agenda? All right, seeing none, let's move on in the agenda then. Report of the committee, though. To old business. The report of the committee of the whole meeting from earlier this evening, and I call on Trustee Scaletta. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would move now, as I did earlier this evening, to recommend that the Village Board of Trustees recommend to the Liquor Commissioner the issuance of a Class A liquor license to Scratchboard Kitchen, LLC, doing business as Scratchboard Kitchen, located at 5 West Campbell. Second. Motion by Trustee Scaletta, seconded by Trustee Canty. Any questions or comments from the board? I think from the audience. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Well, congratulations to uh, our new business, uh, Scratchboard Kitchen, located at 5 West Campbell, opening in April. And so best of luck to you. Open for breakfast and lunch uh, right in downtown Arlington Heights, the former Passero location. And so we wish you the best of luck uh, for many, many years to come. Good luck. And you don't need to stay any longer. <laughs> 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 Well, uh, no other old business then. We'll move on to the consent agenda. Are there any members of the board who wish to remove an item on the consent agenda? Any members of the audience uh, wish to remove an item on the consent agenda? I see uh, Mr. Keith Moons would like to 
pull two items from the consent agenda. The um, consent legal A on the TIF and consent legal C regarding the cannabis drug paraphernalia. So those two items will be pulled. Uh, are there, going back to the board, any members of the board who wish to vote no or pass on any remaining items on the consent agenda? Move approval. Second. Uh, Trustee Tenali moves approval of the remaining items on the consent agenda, seconded by Trustee Lebeds. Questions or comments from the board or from the audience? Roll call. Trustee Tenalia? Yes. Trustee Lebeds? Yes. Trustee Scaletta? Yes. Trustee Canty? Yes. Trustee Rosenberg? Yes. Trustee Schwingbeck? Yes. Trustee Baldino? Yes. Trustee Padovani? Yes. President Hayes? Yes. Move on then to approval of bids, and we do have one item tonight, Mr. Recklaus. Um, we, uh, Mr. Perkins, I believe, is going to address that issue. Uh, thank you. Good evening, everybody. On the agenda this evening is a uh, proposal to award a request for proposals to Springboard Consulting Firm. Uh, they're a marketing design firm in downtown Arlington Heights. Uh, as part of the 2018-19 board strategic plan, one of the priorities was to evaluate uh, the Discover Arlington brand, uh, both within the community and within the region. As a result of that priority, a detailed rebranding study uh, was uh, commenced by staff uh, where we looked at 22 communities uh, in the Illinois metro area and their branding efforts. Uh, some of those ranged uh, upwards of over $200,000 in their scope of work. That um, study was presented in August of 2018 to the Village Board at the Committee of the Whole. There were several takeaways from the board at that meeting, uh, including uh, not uh, doing a full rebranding study in keeping with the Discover Arlington uh, brand, but refreshing it, looking at updating the logo, the tagline, and uh, the series of ads that we run. The ads that we run uh, date probably six or eight years. They were done by different um, design firms, so they're not all totally consistent. Um, so in September last year, we developed a request for proposals and issued that to local design marketing firms. We had seven responses. The internal committee that looks at, uh, was looking at this, it consisted of representatives from the manager's office, uh, police and public works departments, as well as uh, my department, uh, those individuals that have a strong uh, design background. And so the uh, committee went through the seven proposals, selected three for interview, and uh, recommended Springboard as the uh, preferred firm to uh, engage this um, consulting assignment. So Springboard, as I mentioned, they're a downtown firm uh, founded by Rob Rosenberg in 2002. Uh, they do a lot of work in the medical industry, but also have done some work for a number of different communities, including Rosemont and West Lafayette and Aurora in Illinois. Um, so I'd be happy to answer any questions. Um, Michael Murtis is here, as is a representative uh, from Springboard, if there are any questions. Um, so we also have uh, seven different logos that uh, have kind of proliferated throughout the village over time, and so that is part of the scope, looking at um, bringing that back and into scale and what, what can we do with our village logo, how can we um, you know, get one more, uh, more cohesive message uh, in our logo development. So again, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Perkins. Questions, Trustee Rosenberg. Thank you, Mayor. Charles, um, as, as part of their uh, proposal, are they going to help us review the current things that we have already in, in existence as far as programs and future publications and ads and things that we're doing and try to refine some of those also? Yes, the first phase of the project would be to evaluate, you know, what we have been doing and are doing as far as, you know, ad placement, what our uh, different ads are, and, and uh, evaluate that and provide some recommendations on that, as, as well as looking at the seven different logos, uh, including, you know, the Discover logo, and coming up with, you know, three to five, you know, new logos and taglines, and then once there's a selection on that, uh, they would then roll that into a development of a series of, of ads that we would then use in our marketing efforts. Okay. And they're going to review 
pretty much overall all the different things, even like the, I guess the banners and things that we might have in the downtown or other parts of the village, or is that part of it also? Or? Uh, less so on the banners, more on our, um, you know, print. print and digital marketing. And then depending upon, you know, the direction we go, that would, you know, potentially lead to how we change our design on, on the banners and things like that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anybody else on the board? Trustee Scalata. So, Charles, um, after tonight, then a contract will be drawn up and we'll have to vote on that as well? Uh, typically, um, the motion includes authorizing the manager to execute that contract. Um, so, typically with an RFP, and um, so even the police station with the architect, the board didn't see the full contract. Uh, they just uh, you know, directed staff to negotiate that contract, and that's typical on all our RFPs. I would imagine that the the contract for building the police station is was quite complex and it's very complex, yeah. Very long. Yeah. This would be pretty simple. It's a contract prepared by legal that primarily references the RFP and the proposals that were submitted by Springboard. So there was the initial proposal and then we negotiated the fee and some scope and there's a revised update to that proposal so typically it references those documents has our insurance provisions and it's a pretty um, kind of vanilla uh, contract wouldn't you say Robin yes and th what I would say is I mean this is this is a practice consistent with all of our approval of bid items but obviously as is the case with any bid items if, if the board would like to see the contract obviously you're welcome to see it it's just the process doesn't require a separate board action to uh, to move forward with it Okay. So does the contract lay out all the receivables we would receive? The um, reference the RFP. The, the RFP yeah. and the response the to the RFP outlines all the deliverables, yes. Okay. I think it would be helpful just to have it circulated. Absolutely. Okay. And you said it's simple, right? Yep. And I should understand it. Thank you, Charles. All right. Trustee LeBeds. Thank you. Um, Charles, I noticed on the update is uh, a lower cost to the, um, uh, that was negotiated. Um, can you tell us what the, if were some things eliminated or, or was it thought that uh, number of hours for some things will be less or what, what resulted in the difference or just good old negotiating? Just trying to get the best price we can for uh, the scope that we were looking for. Um, so we went back to uh, our preferred um, firm springboard and said show us if you can do the same thing for the better appreciate that thank you All right. and trustee Rosenberg just uh, for point of information the president of the springboard company that we're going to use Rob Rosenberg is no relation to myself <laughs> <laughs> All right. anybody else Seeing anybody in the audience seeing none I'd entertain a motion so moved second Motion to approve, um, I assume. A motion to approve the um, village rebranding re bid. By Trustee Scaletta, second by Trustee Labeds. Any further questions or comments from the board or the audience? <coughs> Roll call. Trustee Scaletta? Yes. Trustee Labeds? Yes. Trustee Rosenberg? Yes. Trustee Canty? Yes. Trustee Schwingbeck? Yes. Trustee Baldino? Yes. Trustee Tenalia? Yes. Trustee Petavani? Yes. President Hayes? Yes. Right, we move on then to uh, the next item in the agenda, and we need, uh, in order to take up the new business items, we need to have a motion to move legal B to this point in the agenda to approve the, uh, or to consider the amendments to the building code. And so uh, could I have a motion to move legal B to this point in the agenda? So moved. Second. second by Trustee Canty, second by Trustee Schwingbeck. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, Mr. Recklaus. Thank you, Mayor. Um, tonight, staff is recommending the adoption of a new building code. Uh, as you all know, staff and the Building Code Review Board have discussed and recommended a complete update of the building code over the past several months. Um, this was discussed back in December at the uh, Committee of the Whole meeting as well. Village staff has comprehensively reviewed the latest standard codes with an eye towards enforceability, fairness, 
and clarity for end users. Staff has worked to minimize all the local amendments currently in our code, as well as bring our codes up to contem contemporary industry standards. These changes will bring greater clarity both to inspectors and to those individuals who build in our, and invest in our community. The updates to the code will be communicated with the building department publication and via social media. Um, any applicants currently in process will be able to complete their projects under the new code. Generally speaking, all new projects will be required to follow the new code going forward. Uh, the village recognizes how important an efficient and business-friendly permit review process is for our community's continued economic prosperity. The updates to the code are one part of an overall effort currently underway to improve our building and life safety processes and customer service um, over the coming months. Other efforts currently underway include electronic process improvements that will increase speed and consistency, better communication with applicants that will increase understanding, a new customer service feedback tool that allow us to better respond to problems that are identified, and a new fee structure. Um, so we would uh, recommend approval. Right. Any questions or comments from the board? Trustee Tenalia. Thanks, Mayor Hayes. So uh, this is um, a project that uh, Steve has been working on um, for a long time, and, and just practicing in town here, I can tell you that these codes have needed to be updated for a long, long, long time. And uh, this is just one piece of the puzzle uh, in, in the development of the department and in the growth of our process here, but um, should be very welcome. I think everyone who uses it will appreciate it. And um, just a small byproduct of this is when, when, it, when the time comes when we are gonna be hiring new inspectors and plan review officers, having something more current and more consistent, it's, it's more interchangeable with other communities. So builders who work in other communities won't find it odd to work here under some old obsolete code. Um, employees who might decide to come to work in Arlington Heights would find the, the advantage of this uh, as well. So it, it works really well for everyone. Uh, and I'm, I'm thankful to be uh, uh, supporting this change here. So I'd recommend approval and I'd make the motion to approve it. Second. Motion by Trustee Tenalia, second by Trustee Padovani. Other questions or comments from the board? Or from the audience? <coughs> Seeing none, do we need a motion? Uh, roll, call? roll call. Yeah, roll call. Trustee Tenalia? Yes. Trustee Padovani? Yes. Trustee Scaletta? Yes. Trustee Rosenberg? Yes. Trustee Canty? Yes. Trustee Baldino? Yes. Trustee Schwingbeck? Yes. Trustee Lebeds? Yes. President Hayes? Yes. Well, thank you, Steve, again, for your leadership in this endeavor. I know there's a, a lot of folks involved in this project, and so uh, let's keep moving forward. I know you're doing a great job, so keep, keep pushing along. Thank you, Mayor. All right, uh, we will then move to new business, and we do have two items to consider now, a proposed variance from Chapter 23 for a property located at 115 North Arlington Heights Road. Is the petitioner present for that? Yes. yes, why don't you come forward? And just introduce yourself if you would. Joseph Yunis. I am part owner of the 115 North Arling tonight. Okay, and just tell it we've got your information, but tell us what you're looking to do here. Uh, we're looking not to, not to install a sprinkler system in the building because in maximum two, three years, we have to demolish the building. Okay, well, we've, we've uh, received your information. We've re read the minutes from the <coughs> review board and uh, would turn it over to staff, if staff has comments. Steve? Um, in light of the fact that we've uh, just approved to adopt a new code, um, it's kind of a timing issue with uh, the next two uh, uh, BCRB motions because the new code would, in, in fact, uh, not require the BCRB motion to even be need to be made. So it just makes good sense to um, uh, approve the motions um, to allow for them to proceed forward as the new code would allow them to. Um, and, and in short, uh, Basically, they're looking to create and put an addition on the building, which current code would require that uh, 
that addition be treated as new construction and require fire sprinklers. But as we've rewritten the code, um, until they exceed a higher square footage threshold for the addition, they wouldn't that wouldn't be needed. So, okay, okay. Trustee Tanalia. Thanks, Mary. So I was at the meeting, and when both of these items, this one and the following one, uh, and in both cases, it was um, it was a, it was a lengthy discussion for these two petitioners, but it culminated with a unanimous perspective from the Building Code Review Board that um, these were unfortunate snags in an old code that really didn't make sense anymore, and with the fact that the new code was more than likely going to be adopted, we as a board, the, the Building Code Review Board, made the motion in two forms. One, to recommend a variance if we didn't adopt the new code, and two, to just recommend approval um, if the new code comes into play and it doesn't matter anymore. So here we are tonight, and it's, um, it's, it's reasonable to go forward with this as it is, so my recommendation is uh, definitely to approve it. Is that a motion? It, I would like to make that a motion. Okay. To make the motion, you're going to have to read the language to verify the motion you want so to that's make. That's exactly what I was going to do. I'm sure that was. <laughs> I just thought I'd help it along. And Probably and number one is one. the motion you want. Is, is it in here? Yeah. So I'd like to um, move for the proposed variance request from Chapter 23, Article 4, IBC, Section 3408.1, <clears> and <throat> Chapter 27, Article 1, IFC, Section 102.3, of the Arlington Heights Municipal Code at 115 North Arlington Heights Road. Second. Okay. Motion by Trustee Tenali, second no. by Trustee. Hold on, I don't think that was Wait, actually can I the motion. The, right one. No. the motion is under recommendation. I mean, are you looking at the cover sheet? Under yeah. recommendation where it says <coughs> there's two, it says number one and number two. So you need, I think you would, you want to do number one no, for a grant to request. Screen, so Stand by. We're digging. Unless you want to bring it up here. Did you find it? Because I can bring mine up. So it would be number one, I believe. It's number one. Number one. Village board grant. Here you go. I got it. Okay. So I'd like to move tonight that the village board grant the request for relief from the requirement in Chapter 23, Article 4, IBC Section F903.2 and Chapter 27, Article 1, IFC Section 903.2, of the Arlington Heights Code for the installation of a fire sprinkler system for the proposed expansion. Second. All right, now uh, Trustee Tanalia made the motion, seconded by Trustee Scaletta. <coughs> Other questions or comments from the board? I think from the audience. Actually, I just wanted to make one comment. So with this, um, you know, the, getting a variation from the Building Code Review Board is not as simple um, as one might think. Um, and the requirement that they put in a full um, um, fire alarm panel um, was also part of um, them, them getting their variation. Um, so I just kind of wanted to point that out that um, they don't just give out variations without making sure that life safety is first and foremost. Thank you. Good point. Uh, Trustee Rosenberg. So, Steve, it's my understanding that they don't, they're not required to have a, an alarm system under this recommendation. That is correct. It, okay. it, it, it was. If, the, if we didn't accept the code. So okay. I think Trustee Scaletta, that was the second alternative, or the alternative Correct. to the motion. If that wasn't accepted, then then they would have to have an alarm system. Oh, my bad. Mm -hmm. I st well, I, I was reading the minutes, and that's where I had picked it up. Yeah, the motion at the meeting was not artfully worded. For All right. So, so it was clarified in the cover sheet. Okay. So the, the, the point is just simply that in the past, as Trustee Scaletta pointed out correctly, it's, it's not a, a slam dunk to get any of this stuff done, and, and there are often trade-offs like this. So that was why we made two possible solutions for each of these petitioners. And um, in light of the fact that the new code is in play, the one does not matter anymore. Agreed. All right, Trustee Rosenberg. So, Steve, just to follow up. So I just want to make sure that we're okay with the fact that as far as fire safety that the building would be sufficient as as it is now to meet whatever code we're proposing and there's not any kind of fire safety issue or uh, 
putting anybody in jeopardy there. Uh, uh, fire was represented at the BCRB meeting as well, and uh, they're okay did, with that. Did, did speak to the did speak to that? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anything else from the board? I think from the audience. Right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say. Oh, we need roll call on this. Yes. Yeah, BCRB. Yeah. Roll call. <clears throat> Trustee Tenalia. Yes. <clears throat> Trustee Scaletta. Yes. Trustee Rosenberg. Yes. Trustee Labeds. Yes. Trustee Schwingbeck. Yes. Trustee Pedavani. Yes. Trustee Baldino. Yes. Trustee Canty. Yes. President Hayes. Yes. Congratulations. Good luck. And then we have one other new business item, a similar request for variance for the property located at 1010 South Arlington Heights Road. Is the petitioner's present. Just introduce yourself and tell us what you're looking to do here. Um, I'm an architect, Paul Florzek, from um, Architectural Office uh, Forma, Inc. And um, I'm representing client here, and our scope of work was to do uh, renovation of the suite at 1010 South Arlington Heights Road. Um, and we do an expansion of 1,500 square foot for the orthodontist's office. And um, our, as a petitioner, we are asking to obtain um, the variance not to install the sprinkler system. We were okay to install a uh, fire alarm system. And uh, with understanding that the future code would uh, not uh, force us to install the sprinkler system because our expansion is only 1,500 square feet. Okay. Mr. Tuluma, same thing to add to that? No, it's it, it's 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 a very similar circumstance, just a slight difference. One was a change of occupancy, and one is a small addition. So um, you end up with the same um, circumstances. Okay, thank you, Trustee Tenalia. Thanks, Mary Hayes. And, and this is something that just happens occasionally. I mean, as a, as a building code review board, we 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 see these things time and time again. It just happens, and. It's just good that we're finally getting a point where some of these things will go away because they're handled appropriately. This is a 1,500 square foot addition, and to bring in a, an entire water service to do sprinkler systems for it is just not economically feasible. So um, at the meeting that night, all of this was, this was discussed in the same outcome, uh, and so I can make a motion now if you'd like me to. Please. Okay. So I'd like to move that the Village Board grant the request for relief from the requirement in Chapter 23, Article 4, IBC, Section F903.2, and Chapter 27, Article 1, IFC, Section 903.2 of the Arlington Knights Code for the installation of a fire sprinkler system for the proposed expansion. Second. Motion by Trustee Tenalia, second by Trustee Baldino. <coughs> Any other questions or comments from the board or the audience? Seeing none, roll call. Trustee Tenalia? Yes. Trustee Baldino? Yes. Trustee Schwingbeck? Yes. Trustee Pedavani? Yes. Trustee Scaletta? Yes. Trustee Lebeds? Yes. Trustee Rosenberg? Yes. Trustee Canty? Yes. President Hayes? Yes. Congratulations to you guys as well. Good luck. Thank you. There is no other new business, so we'll move on to the three now legal items. And let's take the uh, item A first, the ordinance approving an agreement between the Village of Arlington Heights and the Metropolitan Alliance of Police. Mr. Recklaus. Um, I'm going to let M Ms. Ward as our lead negotiator comment on this one. Wow. Um, real briefly, we negotiated <coughs> quickly. Um, it's been a longstanding contract, so it was relatively easy to get through. We used the interest-based bargaining process. Um, the results of the contract, of the negotiations, um, same salary schedules that were agreed to with the fire department, so they're 2.5, 2.3, and 2.25. It's a three-year contract, um, and so we would recommend that they approve it. Do you approve it? There are the police chief is here, along with two members of the bargaining team. All right. Uh, any comments from chief or the team? Would come forward if you would, chief. <laughs> Thank you, mayor. Uh, just real briefly, I'd, I'd like to thank the Village team uh, for their work, as well as the representatives from MAP, who both, uh, both sides worked diligently to, uh, to get this work done, and it's going to promote harmony in a workplace. So there was no disruption, and I appreciate everybody's work. I'll, uh, I'll yield the, phone, the floor here. Thank you. We'll, we keep it brief. Um, we just wanted to say thank you. We do appreciate taking the time out, and obviously it was a nice process and pretty quick, and we appreciate the end result. All right, well, uh, go ahead. Do you want I anything to add? Okay. Uh, I do like um, the chief's 
comment about harmony. Uh, harmony in the workplace is always a good thing, and so we uh, congratulate all members of the team who uh, got this done very quickly and efficiently and for the best interest of the Village of Arlington Heights. And so uh, we can't thank the members, the men and women of our uh, fine police force for all that they work, all the great work that they do to keep us safe on a daily basis. And I know uh, with this contract in place, hopefully it's uh, going to be a harmonious place where you're going to be happy to report to work on a daily basis and <laughs> continue to do the great work that you do for us. And so thank you for your great work. Thank you. Any other comments from the board? Trustee Scaletta. Um, thanks for all your hard work. I was just going to make a motion. Sure, please. Okay. I would move to uh, adopt an ordinance approving an agreement between the Village of Arlington Heights and the Metropolitan Alliance of Police, Arlington Heights Police Chapter Number 510. Second. Second. Motion by Trustee Scaletta. Seconded by Trustee Schwingbeck. Got it. Uh, any further comments from the board or from the audience? Roll call. Right. Oh, we Wait. got one. Melissa. Well, Melissa here. Did you um, ask any other unions if they were interested in bargaining for this contract? I'll, I'll take, you know, no, take uh, that. Ms. Ward. The, it doesn't work that way. The union, this is this unit is certified by the state. It's not an option. Once a unit is certified, that union represents them unless and until the members of the bargaining unit decide they don't want to be represented by that union anymore. Okay, thank you. Right, thanks, Melissa. Any other questions or comments from the audience? Seeing Trustee Tenalia. And I just wanted to say, um, Nick, we had a uh, presentation from, I think her name was Alex, for a uh, program that everyone here was involved with for an active shooter training. And just as a side note from what this police department does and the way you guys work, it was outstanding. She did a great job. She had our attention for two hours and it went by like nothing. Um, everything that was explained and shared with us was a little bit like uh, 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 this, this heavens opening up. It was really different and special and, and important, and I just wish everyone could see it. So your department, doing outstanding work as always, and I'm pretty sure you designed the whole thing. Thanks. <laughs> I appreciate the comments, and I'll pass it on to Sergeant Nelson. She did great. Thank you. All right. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Roll call. Trustee Scaletta? Yes. Trustee Schwingbeck? Yes. Trustee Canty? Yes. Trustee Baldino? Yes. Trustee Padovani? Yes. Trustee Rosenberg? Yes. Trustee Tenalia? Yes. Trustee Labedz? Yes. President Hayes? Yes. And congratulations. Thank you. Uh, all right, we'll move on to the next legal item. That uh, was one uh, removed from the consent agenda, Consent Legal A. That's an ordinance fixing the time and place for a public hearing in connection with the designation of a redevelopment project area and the approval of a redevelopment plan for the village of Arlington Heights in, the Cook, in Cook County, Illinois, a proposed South Arlington Heights road tax increment financing district. Uh, Mr. Perkins, do or I can, Mr. Reckless, I can you jump in. It's relatively simple. Um, you know, as you all know, the village is, is contemplating the establishment of tax increment financing district, the south end of town. State law requires that an ordinance be passed fixing the time, date, and place of the uh, of a uh, public hearing on that matter, and on um, the joint review board being convened. The joint review board is a board of all representatives of all the overlapping taxing bodies um, uh, w with that cover the area of the TIF, and that, that's all that this really does. Um, upon approval, the uh, redevelopment plan will be um, made available to the public at the clerk's office, and I'm told later this week we'll have it available online. Uh, that's correct. It's already available at the clerk's office as required uh, by statute, and uh, if the board concurs, it would then be made available online. Okay. Mr. Moons, uh, you asked this for this to be removed, so uh, the floor is yours. Yeah. Thank you, President Hayes. That's what I was looking for. I, I didn't know if you could explain where this TIF is and where they're going to increment it, and, and you know, when are the public hearings going to occur? Sure. Um, and um, how are you going to notify them? And will there be studies about how much tax is going to go to entice developers? And, the uh, the um, Joint Review Board is going to be um, at 3 p.m. on March 18th here at Village Hall. The public hearing itself is going to be at 7.30 p.m. on April 15th um, uh, here at Village Hall. 
Um, th th those are when the two dates are. Um, the, the TIF proposed itself is kind of on the south end of town along um, I-90 and Arlington Heights Road. Again, in the plan, it lays out the, all the parcels and, and so forth that are in there. Um, and um, as part of that process, the plan itself will have information on kind of, you know, what, uh, what you know, type of, the type of redevelopment that's contemplated and so forth in general terms. All right, any other questions or comments from the board or from the audience on this item? Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion to approve the ordinance. So move. Second. second. By Trustee Labed, second by Trustee Canty. No further questions or comments. Roll call. Trustee Labeds? Yes. Trustee Canty? Yes. Trustee Baldino? Yes. Trustee Tenalia? Yes. Trustee Rosenberg? Yes. Trustee Petavani? Yes. Trustee Schwingbeck? Yes. Trustee Scaletta? Yes. President Hayes? Yes. And the last item was a consent item C. 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 An ordinance amending Chapter 8 of the Arlington Heights Municipal Code regarding new articles uh, regarding cannabis slash drug paraphernalia. Uh, Mr. Recklaus or Ms. Ward? Sure. Um, as a result of adult use recreational cannabis becoming legal, the language that we had in our codes was no longer enforceable. So um, I rewrote it to comply with the law um, for both adult use cannabis and drug paraphernalia and at the suggestion of the police chief included a social hosting provision as well like we have for alcohol. So if there's an adult um, responsible for providing or allowing marijuana to be used by an, a minor in their home, then they can be held responsible for that as well. Okay, thank you. Mr. Moons. <clears throat> thank you, President Hayes. I guess I... This is one I had questions on as well. So is paraphernalia then in Arlington Heights, is it illegal to have? I mean, are, are you, if you can go out and buy it around other towns and bring it in, so is the per paraphernalia to, I think you said, ingest into the human body, is that, is that illegal in Arlington Heights then? Can you not have paraphernalia? You can't have illegal paraphernalia or paraphernalia for illegal drugs. But what about consuming cannabis? Like a well, the consumption of cannabis is legal. So the paraphernalia to use that is legal. legal. Yes, that's even why it's if, that's it's why that's why our code is now tied to the statutes themselves to make sure that we're not running afoul of the state laws. To, to be clear, that was what we were correcting because the old code did have ca cannabis para paraphernalia as illegal. Given that it's a legal substance, now we had to take out those references. But and obviously, for but for other drugs, we still want that paraphernalia to be. And that's the reason that if you look at section one, the proposed section eight nine zero two, says unless it's specifically permitted by either one of the cannabis acts, the drug paraphernalia is illegal. So and it's, it's permitted. permitted by Illinois. If it's permitted by the state to be used with cannabis, and then it, does. it is okay. And it does. We can't home rule out of that. And Correct. Opt out and all that kind of stuff. Correct. We can't home rule. Right. All we okay. can do is zone out. We can't home rule out right. anything. Okay. All right. Right. Any other questions or comments from the board or the audience on this one? Seeing none, I entertain a motion to approve. Move approval. Second. Second. By Trustee Baldino, second by Trustee Labeds. Uh, if no further questions or comments, roll call. Trustee Baldino? Yes. Trustee Labeds? Yes. Trustee Rosenberg? Yes. Trustee Canty? Yes. Trustee Scaletta? Yes. Trustee Tenalia? Yes. Trustee Schwingbeck? Yes. Trustee Padovani? Yes. President Hayes? Yes. I think that takes care of all the agenda items. Uh, report of the village manager, Mr. Reckless. Nothing further this evening. I think from the village board under petitions and communication. Seeing none, I just want to thank the uh, Special Events Commission for another great Hearts of Gold uh, awards dinner uh, Saturday night at Rolling Green Country Club. I uh, heard some really great stories about many members of our community that give back uh, selflessly to our community. And so... Uh, we very much appreciate the hard work of the Special Events Commission and congratulate again all of the awards winners that evening. Anything further? Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. By Trustee Labed, seconded by Trustee Rosenberg. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you all for joining us tonight. <clears throat>